This story will cover from then to now and next, all about change, how to turn losers into winners. La Rochelle is a fairly large town on the western Atlantic coast of France. It has a long history of man's relationship with the sea, the people, fishing, boats and shipping. Its inhabitants include many feathered ones, gulls. We look at how they've become part of this marine community as it's changed so much over the years, alongside the people, the boats and in particular fish and fishing. Lifeblood not only of La Rochelle but in fact of the whole planet. Four stories intertwine here. The famous town itself and its spectacular aquarium. How life in the sea has evolved and man's impact on the ocean and its future. For dogs and tourists, this is a typically French town with a typical accordion accompaniment. You wouldn't expect such flimsy, simple organisms as jellyfish to become fossilized, but they were, and today we know that did happen some 650 million years ago in southern Australia. When corals appeared, though tiny individually, they were to produce the greatest animal construction in the world, the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. Sea slugs without a shell were more mobile and have diversified into many beautiful and highly coloured invertebrates of the sea, that is, without backbones. Nervous systems were improving all the time. Squid and cuttlefish, like this one, can change colour for camouflage and have sensitive tentacles and eyes. The octopus has lost its shell altogether, shows considerable intelligence, with a siphon and eight octo arms carrying powerful suckers, plus formidable beak jaws, it can tackle unpalatable looking sea urchin, which escapes slowly on its spines, or may try to. Then came the true fish. One group with cartilage in their skeletons are the sharks and rays, which seem to fly through the sea on extended wings, none more so than the mighty manta ray. The bony fish, like this remora, were to follow, and in the ingenuity of marine life, adapted to manta rays as a host, picking up bits of food debris along the way. With a flap of its fin wings, the ray and remora combo reveals another partnership of the sea that has evolved so many over the years. These shrimps share a burrow with a goby, of which there are hundreds of species worldwide, from an earlier invertebrate to a modern bony fish. And the world's largest fish, plus remoras, the whale shark, which feeds on the smallest of food, the plankton, from the far distant past. A turtle has four flippers and represents a further stage in the story of life on Earth, here with a reminder of their ancestors, Remoras, the bony fish. Then came the birds, some abandoning flight, like the penguins, which are successful today flying underwater on modified wings, and other seabirds like tufted puffins and guillemots pursue their fishy ancestors with great ability. And on to marine mammals like seals and sea lions, with whom man now competes for food, the fish. Like the whales, man has hunted them hard 
though these days the attitude to whales, both in the sea and in captivity, has greatly improved. And species like fin whales, the second largest after the blue whale, are now recovering, can often be seen in the Atlantic, for example, off the French coast. So man has inherited a great diversity of marine life, including whales, seals, fish and turtles. But he enters an alien environment where the others are perfectly adapted and he is not, needing modern equipment to survive down here. This community started with the jellyfish 650 million years ago via the fishes right through to those highly intelligent mammals the dolphins. It's still amongst us, but for how long? As our impact on the oceans is now massive, in evolutionary terms, in a blink of an eye. La Rochelle is as good a place to look as anywhere, here halfway up the east Atlantic coast of France. Limpets picked by hand, the earliest form of collecting food from the sea, or use a tool like a knife or a special spade. It's all about extracting prey, like this little egret using his yellow feet to frighten out small fish. These mudflats near La Rochelle contain millions of tiny creatures, a truly rich landscape on which so much larger life depends. And seaweed too, an important food around the world that can be hand-picked. By using his spade, the fisherman can take advantage of the food chain by using worms as bait for a more ambitious and very common form of fishing, <laughs> okay, rod merci. and line. A tool of the trade, well tested over time and dependent on the tide. Here are two examples side by side, both using the same idea. Fishermen need to know about tides and fish behaviour in order to have a good chance of catching something. They can't run around like the egret, but rather use a simple device called a lift net to be dropped in as fish approach on the rising tide. It's a waiting game for a heron. Flatfish camouflage is OK until he moves up with the tide. So much for the bird fishermen. What are the humans caught with their ingenious equipment? Answer not much. A few crabs for soup and another little flatfish, one that got past the heron but not the net. So they keep trying and partying. Nearby fishes on the menu, sea bream. From simple fish catching methods to massive nets, sonar and attempts to limit overfishing by quotas, the pressure on fish stocks is increasing worldwide. But more and more nowadays, we are encouraged to eat sustainable species. And indeed, as much sea life is highly prolific, that is the right way to go. Millions of other people around the world have much less choice. They depend on the sea for their survival. That could be seaweed in Japan. Shellfish in France. In fact, tastes and traditions cover the whole range of plants and animals that we have seen in evolution, from jellyfish to whales. Fish and chips, French fries even. The fish from the Atlantic, with a shore as fertile as any farmer's field. But shellfish beds are now seriously threatened, apparently. And the whole production of the planet's oceans depends on the life it supports, from plankton to whales. On the blue planet, the only one like it.
We need to understand it better, that alien world down below. How many children today know about fish and their life in the sea? Where their cod, as fish with the chips, comes from? Here they can find out the famous aquarium of La Rochelle, one of the largest private aquariums in Europe. Since 1970, millions of visitors have come to learn more about the sea, its inhabitants and its future. The wonder of bioluminescent plankton display. The potential abundance of fishes, intriguing to young and old. Plus dogfish, a small kind of shark. What a pleasure and how educational to be able to sit in a shark theatre and admire these beautifully adapted creatures so often lied about. And a privileged view of a sawfish, a kind of shark with a saw instead of jaws used for cutting through the sea floor for food. And a giant grouper taken stupidly by some fishermen when the fish gathered to spawn, thus wrecking further generations. Here at La Rochelle, the old fishing harbour, which was by the two towers and tidal, has been replaced by a now bigger one out of town and so has the equipment, allowing non-stop fishing with no tidal restrictions and more efficient than ever. Good news for fishermen and consumers perhaps, but a slippery slope for the catches as they are hauled aboard and then delivered here. The mussel harvest is massive, highly automated, perfectly timed for freshness. These heavy iron plates are pulled across the sea floor, a kind of underwater ploughing the boats are leaving, having delivered their catch on time, recrewed, refueled, and returning to a potentially declining world, which in effect, as consumers, we are aiding and abetting. So what is the solution? Well, it's fairly simple. Take less from the sea, whose resources, through evolution, have become vast and varied, before it's too late. We can turn losers back into winners, and La Rochelle is an example where the aquarium's insight is crucial. We must set up restricted or no fishing zones, agree and enforce quotas. Already there are some huge sanctuaries set aside for marine life to proliferate and spread. It can and is being done, but, but, the Living Blue Planet report in 2015 warned that most commercial fisheries face collapse within 30 years, that the world's fishing fleet is two or three times larger than the oceans can support. And as ocean acidity rises due to climate change, it means that farming or fishing with mussels like this will be commercially non-viable by 2100. Scientists say the mussel's grip on the rock or rope is weakened and they fall off the end of Mou Marinière. So what next for La Rochelle with its uncertain fishing future but with a wonderful aquarium with so much diversity, so educational for young and old alike? What will the next generation inherit? And what will its attitude be to the sea and its resources? Terrorism permitting, Tourism may prosper, and the wildlife that takes advantage will prosper too. Gulls are becoming aggressive, in fact. A seabird, now an urban bird. Some also say that if we totally deplete the oceans and wreck that mighty ancient ecosystem, all that will be left is how it all began 650 million years ago.
no fish. Just jellyfish drifting all over our unique blue planet. And there's not much meat on a jellyfish for billions of us. <laughs>